Welcome to Enzymes, Biological Catalysts, a series of short videos introducing you to enzyme function. In this first video, we will have a brief introduction to the study of enzymes. To get the most out of the videos, I recommend that you watch them in order. This is a reminder that this presentation is Dr. Johnson's intellectual property. What are enzymes? Quite simply, they are biological catalysts. Typically, enzymes are proteins, but other biomolecules can also catalyze reactions, for example, catalytic RNA or ribozymes. To distinguish the catalytic activity of these other biomolecules from those of protein-based catalysts, specific names are given to these other catalytic biomolecules so that the term enzyme is still recognized as referring to catalytic proteins. People have known for some time that yeast was able to convert sugars, mostly sucrose, to other compounds for energy. However, this observation cannot have been particularly novel since yeast has been used in combination with grains and sugars for millennia in baking and the production of alcoholic beverages. Scientists in the 19th century were interested in determining the cause of fermentation. During the second half of the 19th century, there was an active debate between Louis Pasteur, who argued that fermentation was caused by active processes of microscopic organisms, and Eustace von Liebig, who argued that it was a spontaneous decomposition. Because of this focus on yeast, it is not surprising that the term the German physiologist Wilhelm Kühne coined in 1878 for the entity that was able to cause fermentation was enzyme which literally means within yeast. He was awarded the 1907 Nobel Prize for this work. If you have heard of zymergy, this is the study and practice of fermentation in brewing, winemaking, and distilling. Yeast is also used to leaven bread. Kunin named his yeast extract zymase. Although this was actually a mixture of enzymes, almost all subsequently discovered enzymes have been named according to Duclos' 1898 proposal that the suffix "-as", be used to identify them as enzymes. In 1897, Edward Buchner, who had studied with Emil Fischer and other notable German chemists, ran an experiment showing the same conversions occurred with cell-free yeast extract as with whole yeast. He was awarded the 1907 Nobel Prize for this work. There is some controversy regarding this. In 1872, Russian physician Marina Manaseina is reported to have produced results showing cell-free alcoholic fermentation. Apparently, Buchner knew of her work and was rather dismissive of it. Regardless of who first showed cell-free fermentation, the recognition that only extracts of a cell rather than whole cells were required for fermentation is an important milestone in the development of modern biochemistry. This recognition initiated the search for the agents causing these chemical reactions and for the search for additional such entities. Thus was born the study of metabolism and metabolic pathways and the discipline of enzymology or the study of enzymes. What kinds of reactions can enzymes catalyze? Any reaction that you could imagine could potentially be catalyzed by an enzyme. Today, we classify enzymes into seven main groups based on the reactions that they catalyze. Each group contains enzymes that catalyze the same type of chemical transformation and has several subdivisions and sub-subdivisions based on factors such as the bonds broken or formed and the cofactors used. The final number of each EC classification is for the substrate. The EC number for any particular enzyme is governed by the International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, IUBMB, and is especially useful when multiple different names have been given to an enzyme. Let's have a closer look at the enzyme classes. The oxidoreductases all catalyze transfers of electrons to or from substrates. Many of these enzymes involve the transfer of hydride and are called dehydrogenases. A special subgroup catalyzes reactions in which molecular oxygen is the electron acceptor. These enzymes are called oxidases. In this example of a dehydrogenase reaction, the hydride from carbon-1 is transferred to the electron acceptor NADP, and the hydrogen atom of the alcohol leaves as a proton. These electron transfers result in the primary alcohol of the substrate, glycerol, becoming an aldehyde. 
The transferases catalyze transfers of a group from one substrate to another. Transfers of hydrogen and oxygen are not included in this group. Common types of enzyme belonging to this group are kinases and transaminases. In this example, a methyl group from s methionine, SAM, is transferred to the tau nitrogen of histamine. As the name hydrolase suggests, these enzymes catalyze hydrolysis reactions or bond cleavages that are caused by reaction with water. Enzymes that belong to this group include lipases, esterases, proteases, peptidases, and phosphatases. In this example, the thioester bond of acetyl-CoA is hydrolyzed to yield coenzyme A and acetate. Lyases also cleave bonds, but they do so by means other than hydrolysis or oxidation. The example shown here is for cleavage of the bond between carbon 1 and 2 of lactate by a retroaldol reaction to form acetaldehyde and formate. Isomerases catalyze interconversions of isomers. These could be structural isomers or stereoisomers. In the case of the latter, it is common to call the enzymes racemases or epimerases, depending on the conversion that occurs. Geraniol isomerase catalyzes the isomerization of geraniol into 3S linalool. This involves the transfer of the hydroxyl group from carbon 1 to carbon 3 and concomitant relocation of the alkene bond. Ligases join or ligate substrates together. These reactions require input of energy, commonly from hydrolysis of ATP, although other nucleotide triphosphates can be used instead. They are often found in biosynthetic pathways. Glutathione synthase catalyzes the formation of the peptide bond to form glutathione. The energy required for this comes from hydrolysis of ATP, which is actually involved in the reaction to make the hydroxyl group of the carboxylic acid a better leaving group. The final class of enzymes are the translocases. These catalyze the movement of ions or molecules across membranes, or sometimes their separation within membranes. If energy is needed for this type of reaction, it often comes from hydrolysis of nucleotide triphosphates, such as ATP. The example shown here is for a translocase that expels divalent metal ions, such as zinc, lead, and cadmium, out of cells. The expulsion requires energy, which comes from hydrolysis of ATP. Now the discipline of enzymology is focused on understanding how enzymes work by understanding their mechanisms and the structural features that make them efficient. Modern research in metabolic pathways revolves around understanding how the enzymes interact with one another and the regulation not just of a single pathway, but of multiple pathways. Next time, we'll look at the effects of catalysts on reaction energetics.